Our next talk is also pre-recorded all the way from Finland, um, and it will be presented by Esapeka Kiskitalo and Ari Makiranta. Um, so first I'll tell you about Esapeka. Esapeka Kiskitalo is an IT systems manager at the National Library of Finland. He was there when the National Library and a number of other academic libraries switched over to Koha in 2019. Now he leads the team that provides Koha maintenance and development services for all of those libraries. Isapeka is also responsible for CRM and software development environments at the National Library. His previous experience includes digital preservation, institutional repositories, support services for research data management, as well as open science and open access policy issues. I really wish we could have met Isapeka, but I'm looking forward to his talk. <laughs> and then on to Ari. Um, Ari Makiranta, he is the CEO at Koha Suomi Limited. He has been involved in open source projects and Finnish public libraries since 2010. He led the project that resulted in the very first Finnish public library going live with Koha. He now leads Koha Suomi Limited. The company is owned by about 100 Finnish municipalities. The company provides maintenance and development services for public, for public libraries in those municipalities. So uh, we're about to play their talk, which is called, is titled Unique Koha Cooperation um, for, from the National Library of Finland. And we'll, we'll play that shortly. Thank you so much. Hello. My name is Esa-Pekka Keskitalo, and I come from the National Library of Finland. I am an Information Systems Manager, and among other things, I lead the team that makes Koha happen for 15 university and special libraries in Finland, and for the National Library itself. Together with Ari Mäkiranta from Koha Finland Limited, we are going to tell you about how we go about Koha together, how we coordinate, how we collaborate, how we share knowledge and set common goals. We will also discuss the bigger picture of Finnish Library Network and how national initiatives help Koha libraries as well as others. We would not have achieved what we have without working together. We have learned that the scientific and public libraries are different from each other, but not that different. After all, we are all using Koha. Our cooperation doesn't need heavy organizational structures. We don't have complicated agreements, and we don't really bother calculating what we can get for what we must give. It will balance out, and it will add value. I guess we are talking about an approach that is familiar to those of you who work with open source software projects, and I know many of you do. There's a lot to be learned from there. Everything has its time, and I'll have an example about sometimes it's better, with a good cheer, to start looking for new constellations of cooperation. Hello. As Esa-Pekka told, my name is Ari Mäkiranta, and my part of this presentation covers Koha's use in public libraries. I used to work in Joensuu Regional Library, it is a public library in the eastern part of Finland, and about 100,000 people are living in that area. Until 2010, few competing system vendors provided the ILS for Finnish li public libraries. Then, one of those bought competing companies, and the result was a monopoly. A monopoly is never a good situation for the customer. Prices tend to get higher, and development is lower. That was the reason why we wanted to check if an open source ILS would be an alternative. A long story to short, between 2010 and 2014, we had projects that led going live with Koha in June 2014. First in Joensuu, and at the end of 2015, all public libraries in North Karelia were using the same Koha installation. Many other public libraries were also interested in Koha. The big question was, how should we organize our cooperation? In the end, we decided that the best way was to set up a limited company that provided services 
just for the municipalities that own it. Koha Suomi LTD was born in September 2016. There were six founding cities and now about 100 municipalities own company shares. The people living in those municipalities total over 1.5 million. We had many reasons why we wanted to start using open source ILS. As I said, costs were rising, so the finance was the first reason. The second major reason was to gain decision-making power and more control over our ILS and the data that's in it. We wanted to get a better understanding of the ILS and how we can use it. We hoped that the skill level of our employees in libraries would rise. And as I later explained, the most of those object objectives have been achieved. Our work with Koha has benefited also those libraries that are still using commercial system vendors. Their costs are now low, much lower than before Koha came to Finnish ILS market. So, how did Koha find its way to Finnish university libraries? They all used the same system from the dawn of history, Voyager for the last 20 years. We knew it was getting old and we were discussing the options for years. It became obvious that different libraries had so different visions about future, different approaches, different priorities, that no single new system could have been chosen to everyone's satisfaction. After accepting this fact, things began to develop much more quickly. In 2018, about a half of the Voyager users decided to put out the call for tenders, leaning towards a hosted, perhaps cloud-based solution. Eventually, they chose Alma. The other half decided to adopt an open source library system. At that point of time, the selection of Koha was almost uncontested. The other options were unsuitable or at an uncertain future or were, in fact, pretty much in the future. Importantly, we had the experience of public co libraries there and the knowledge that they would be there for us. The path of open source and the do-it-yourself approach instead of using service providers was settled on in February 2018. The implementation project was launched in April. The first implementation happened as soon as in October, and finally a year later in October 2019, the last of the 16 libraries went live with Koha. Every migration was a common effort of the library in question and the Koha team in the National Library. The library knew their collections, their processes, and their data. The Koha team translated the needs into a migration process and also contributed to the code of Koha in order to accommodate those needs. Everything went smoothly. Still, I can tell you it was quite a year for everybody involved. Our success depended heavily on the skills and knowledge base created by the previous work done in public, li public libraries. Many of my team members had gained experience there. I should also mention the flexibility of our server platform provider, CSC, a company that provides various computing services to its owners, state and universities. Yet another thing, we could not have achieved this without the decades-long tradition of doing things together with the university libraries. And as you will see, there were crucial components of shared services around that made the transition easier for us. I think we are finally approaching the ideal of modularity as we were really able to change one part of the whole without needing to change everything else. A state of affairs we were many times promised by our software providers but never quite delivered. Some of us did think that something important was lost when the era of one library system for all university library ended. But on the other hand, I think it was fair that the libraries could, for the first time, make the choice and were not press gang to an Iron Maiden of one solution. 
and I am pretty sure the open source option had its impact on the, on the price tag of the other option. And we could, should I say, relax a bit. Uh, with Voyager, we had a rather heavy organization structure in place, hailing from the times when buying a single server was a huge investment. I dare to say, on behalf of the scientific co-libraries, that we managed to get decisions done now with much less hassle in a framework of a very loose alliance. In Finland, we are not using Koha's OPAC. Instead, we are using Finna, as are most of Finnish libraries. And what is Finna? It's a common OPAC for libraries. Finna is WooFind-based OPAC that most Finnish public and university libraries are using. The development and maintenance is handled by national libraries. The common OPAC gives us many advantages. Centra centralized development is more cost effective as the fewer developers can handle the whole system that is then used libraries around the Finland. That does not mean that the libraries can't have a say how and to what direction Finna should be developed. It's also easier for library customers that we have the same OPAC in different libraries. Even if they move to a different city or start their studies at the university, in the library they will find a familiar OPAC. There is another national service that helped us to be quick in implementing Koha. It is the national cataloging platform that we call Melinda. We do make item records in Koha, but practically all bibliographic cataloging proper happens in Melinda. There, libraries can exploit others' inputs, and more and more metadata are also obtained directly from the Finnish publishers and library service providers. Where probably tagged, a record will then automatically replicate in the local Koha catalog. All university libraries participate in Melinda, and the large ma majority of public libraries. Actually, we hope to achieve complete coverage of public libraries in 2024. Koha cooperation in Finland. As I earlier said, Koha Suomi LTD was born in September 2016. Before that, developers were employed by different cities and there was a lack of coordination about how to de develop Koha. That's why all system developers transferred to the company's payroll. After that, it was easier to organize development in Finland. But we already had three widely different versions of Koha in public libraries. So the first thing to do was to combine those. And it took almost a year before all uh, installations were the same. We were in too much of a hurry when we went to live with Koha, so we had to do quite a lot of modifications to it. And we did not have time or knowledge how to get them to the community's version of Koha. That is why we are using the Finnish fork of Koha. Our goal is to get closer to the community's version, but we have a lot of our code that is still needed. So it is a long road to get there. Scientific libraries are getting there much faster as public libraries as they are not using all of our code. But now I'm going to tell about, about our organization and how we are organizing, organizing Koha development in Finland. Koha Suomi LTD has of course a board. All six library consortiums have a member on the board. The chairman of the board is Rebecca Pilppula, who is going, later going to tell you about Finnish library field. Our board is selected in an annual general meeting of shareholders. Koha Suomi has six employees, a CEO, a super librarian and four system developers. From the begini beginning, the idea was that the libraries and the librarians have a say in the de development of Koha. 
so we formed some groups to help organize our work. All groups have a representative from each library consortium. All meetings are held online and that was even before COVID-19. The first group is the expert group that has seven members, one from each consortium and I as a chairman. The expert group meets about six to eight times a year and it decides and prioritizes development and bug fixes. It organizes Kohasuomi seminaries. It decides common policies and guides other groups. Then we have a cataloging specialist group. Cataloging experts form this group and in their meetings they decide uniform cataloging rules and policies. In Finland we are using Mark 21. All cataloging goes to Kohasuomi wide bibliographic record repository. Basically it's a Koha installation from which all our libraries can utilize records. Our last permanent group is the super librarian group and they have a meeting once a week. In the meetings members discuss everyday issues and solve problems. They exchange tips on how to use Koha most effectively. They test new functionalities and features and they report bugs. And this is how that how public libraries have organized Koha development. As Esapekka already told, when scientific libraries decided to take Koha as their ILS, it was clear that both library sectors should work together. The scientific libraries have similar, similar groups as public libraries. And although we have our separate groups, we attend to each other meetings and share ideas and set common goals. And also Esa Pekka and I have a brief online meeting every two weeks just to check what's going on in the other sector. In the past we have organized six Koha seminars and from now on we are going, it, going to do it together with scientific libraries. In the seminars we have had presentations and workshops but the most important is to get together with different Koha users and share ideas and discuss about Koha. Because of COVID-19 in 2020 we had a webinar but hopefully next year we can have a proper seminar. Thank you. Well, we have told you about Koha, Melinda and Finna. Perhaps the most tangible examples are how we do things together but many others exist. For example, we're doing cataloging pretty much together we must be very clear about shared understanding of rules and their interpretation and we put quite a lot of effort on that. Also, RDA and Big Frame initiatives of course require intense work today and I am happy to say that we have come along pretty well on those issues. Another common effort is the Finnish ontology service FINTO. The National Library has been working on providing a home for dozens of thesauri and ontologies and it has been integrated with many places where subject headings are needed. We may have unique cooperation but are we unique in that we cooperate? Of course not. And we would love to hear about your success stories, what you have done differently, what more you have done and if you dare what could have done better. For me personally Koha is a pretty new area of learning and networking and I ask please do not hesitate to be in contact with us afterwards if you would like to talk more about these things. Maybe we shall work together in the future. Remember, your library is different, but not that different. Thank you.